it takes a big man to be able to admit that he was wrong. And boy, was I wrong about the Knicks and the Nets. Let's talk about basketball in New York City. It's the front office, a pod about New York City basketball, where we have the same conversation that we have on Twitter, on NBA Twitter. I am your host, Eve Darboos. That's right. Why? V E S Darboos on Twitter. I w- I want to talk basketball with New York City today, but I want to talk real with you guys. In the latter half of this show, which will be, um, we're gonna talk Nets. But first, we're gonna talk. About these New York Knicks. Last night the Knicks made me not want a podcast. I I um I watched every second of this Nuggets uh versus Knicks game. And the thing that shocked me was how quickly they got behind by by 20 points. I mean, it just rapidly, like, they disintegrated. And that's not going to be the focus of my rant. My I, The performance I saw last night is a microcosm of what's happening to this team. This result was go- always going to be the result. Go back in my Twitter timeline and you will see that from the moment Steve Mills got the job I said this is failure this this like d- don't Knicks fans understand that this is the same they were so happy to be getting rid of Phil Jackson that they didn't even see the greatest trick the devil ever pulled Jim Dolan hired Phil Jackson not because he wanted to cede control of what was happening in, 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 at MSG. He was like, you know what? People are going to start protesting. That's going to look ugly. I can't have my bitches seeing protesters around my place. I'm a player. I'm JT. And these are the straight shots. Jim Jim Dolan is a disease. It's a societal disease. It's it's this concept that when successful people have children that those children will have the at the same aptitude for success as The father. Jim Dolan is a trust fund baby. Not not even well, we don't even know. All we know is it wasn't skill set, it wasn't guile, it wasn't perseverance that got him to being able to own a, a, a franchise as large as the Knicks. Jim Dolan is an incompetent. That's right. He is the living embodiment of fuck up. But 
But he inherited a bulletproof business where all he had to do was show up, strum his guitar in board meetings, and people will continue to just have their subscription of TV, television. In most areas which, which carry um, optimum or cable vision, there is no competition. On my block, that's the only choice. So, the cable television business is wired, right? What, what his father turned over to him was like, listen, even you can't fuck this up. So now he has a, a basketball team uh, and where in sports, sports has a way of revealing people's character. I understand Mikhail Prokhorov 1,000%. That man saw an opportunity to do a flip and he did it. Listen, this is the way these guys got made their money in Russia is is from being ex military ex KGB they had to be inside guys to get the contracts and and survive when an owner is a come from nothing person they understand how to build things they understand how to put together companies and structure them, how to create personnel, how to empower your, your, your staff. How to provide the, the best intelligence to your stakeholders. These are components of companies that only if you've like it's partially something that's a part of you and then it's the other part of it is that it's just the experience of doing it so Mikhail Prokhorov on understanding what his limitations are built a, a basketball organization the first time and he was like oh, this guy took the Sixers to the finals after they didn't go to the finals for a very long time. He had Allen Iverson. Okay, I hired Billy King. I've won championships in Europe, and all I did was spend money. Uh, I'm, that's exactly how I'm going to win in America, too, in the NBA. That's what Mikhail Prokhorov thought. But when that was proven wrong quickly... He went in another direction. A direction that Jim Dolan does not understand. Jim Dolan has never built a company. He was bequeathed one. Jim Dolan doesn't understand customer service. His customers don't have choice. But Jim Dolan in his mind thinks that this is his birthright. He believes that his DNA gives him the experience and the understanding of building companies and, and, and how to make them successful. He believes that in his heart just like Donald Trump believes it too. Donald Trump started with 450 million. The reason why he lies so much about being a billionaire is because the shame of someone who inherited 450 million in the 70s and you didn't grow that into billions. You could have never did anything. You could have just left it in the bank. And you would have turned that money into billions. Donald Trump doesn't know how to do anything. He's a used car salesman. 
A very good one, by the way. He is the, the full-on example of the uh, formation of an idiocracy in our big square states. But that's not what we wanted to talk about. Jim Dolan is a disease, Knicks fans. In New York City, I present to you Exhibit A of why Jim Dolan is a fuck-up. When Jim Dolan bought back Steve Mills, it wasn't because he thought Steve is going to revolutionize how basketball is played with the Knicks. He's going to be transformational in this organization that needs transformation. That's how we're going to turn this thing around. I've brought in the guy who's going to set forth a program to develop players and acquire talent and promote our brand in, 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 into the industry, into the league. And build our team into a champion. None of those thoughts went through Jim Dolan's head. Not not one of those thoughts. But what did go through Jim Dolan's head is. That's Steve, man. He's a good man. He knows his place. We're going to win because we're, we've got New York City. We've got the garden. This cap space is about to hit. You know, throw a boatload of cash at Durant and they're going to want to party in New York and be in the Hampton. So this is going to be easy. And me and my guy, Steve, are going to do it. Well, damn it, Knicks fans. That's why we are here. What do you expect for but 129 to 92 against this roster? There's no... It's not even worth talking about, Knicks fans. It's not even worth having a conversation about. Where I want to admit that I was wrong about the Knicks was... I really believed that you guys would veteran your way to getting close to a playoff berth. Because you, there's a team of competent guys that played high-level basketball on the Knicks. The problem is they all play the same position. <laughs> Excuse me. And Knicks fans, we may have to face the fact that R.J. Barrett is not a number one. Now, that doesn't mean R.J. Barrett is a bust. Shoot, I think R.J. Barrett could be as good, every bit as good as Jalen Brown. And look how much money Jalen Brown got. R.J. Barrett is physical. I like that about him. But he's going to need a lot more moves. Like, a lot more ways to get his offense off. Because he's not as nimble as I thought he was. I thought he was, like, Melo is a bulldozer, right? The reason why he's he's hard to defend is not only is his ju- is his shot immaculate and his shot making ability is off the charts. Even when that's not clicking, he could put his shoulder in your chest and score at the rim. <laughs> 